Okay, we are back in the museum. David wanted to talk and rant and give everybody a piece of his mind. I did. Some of his thoughts, yeah. That's why you got me from you doing what I was doing. You weren't doing nothing. I was doing plenty. Actually, she was rearranging her Ninja Turtles because she actually found a couple of NECA turtle items in a Target store. I know. I know. I almost fell out on the uh, on the floor. Mm hmm. <laughs> and then they pull the old okie doke. Yeah. They had a McDonald's Pops, Funko Pops, Pop, yeah. um, Target the exclusive. The McNuggets. Yeah. And they're like, oh no, you can't buy these. Yeah, the street date is <laughs> not until like the 23rd. 24th. It's the 24th. It's the 17th. Today is January 17th. Why'd you put them on the shelf then? Yeah, like days early. And they do that a lot. I've heard a lot of people complain about that. Yeah. And then they take it away from you and they won't even negotiate. No. They, they're not anymore. It used to be you could talk to a manager and they'd be like, all right, whatever. Because they, they don't care. Well, they used to say the customer is always right. Now yeah. they say the customer can get the hell out of here. Exactly. <laughs> but, but they play too many games. Yeah. No, I don't even want. I mean, I know a way around it. But, um, yeah, but you know, it's like, why you have to, why do you have to pull the okie doke? Why yeah. can't they just do the right thing? Just not put it out or <laughs> sell it to you. Yeah. The struggle is real, folks. Yeah, and whatever. we were talking about this in the store. And so, but really, we're just kind of transitioning this discussion to the rest of the collecting community here that, um, a lot of people wonder about this they wonder about okay why don't these toy companies make enough of this stuff and also why is it that these toy companies don't do anything to promote these new properties that's a big uh question that i i hear a lot in the collecting community now also oh we're putting you know walmart's putting gi joe figures on the on the shelves they get their gi joe like anniversary figures or whatever they are and then Target's got the exclusive um, Cobra Island figures. And then they've got the Masters of the Universe figures that, is, that are popping up everywhere now. And, oh, well, there's no show or movie or anything to promote these. And how are they going to get the kids interested? And how are they going to keep selling these properties? And I can answer that question, but nobody's going to like it. <laughs> Basically, because they don't care. And they're not trying to sell it to the kids. They know the kids aren't going to buy them. Period. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to humor us. To humor the adult collector. Because they know that there is a niche within the adult collecting community by which there are a lot of us that are doing this for the nostalgia. And a piece of that nostalgia for a lot of people is going into a toy store, which no longer exists for the most part, or going into the toy department and finding it on the shelf saying oh here it is and finding it on the shelf finding it in the wild as they put well it wouldn't be finding it in the wild if they stocked it enough that you could actually buy them that you could actually go into Target not have to go into seven different targets um, two or three days a week for five months and still not find what you're looking for <laughs> to the point where you don't even want them anymore like I don't even I'm at the point where I don't even want to finish uh, getting the classified figures because I know I'll have to get them aftermarket or at a convention at three four times the price I'm tired of that but they do that only to humor us they know the kids aren't interested they know the kids aren't going to buy them they figured that out in the mid 90s actually Mattel figured it out first and I brought that up in, I know I'm going on and on, mm -hmm. but I, I brought that up in the video that I just did where I toured the 1988 Mattel Toy Fair catalog. Because mm -hmm. if you remember, it was, some of you might remember, th that, that catalog is very uh, Barbie heavy. And in the mid early to mid-90s, they started making these really high-end adult collector market Barbies. Adults-only Barbies that cost hundreds. They were super expensive worthless now and so is Barbie Barbie <laughs> um, nobody's buying Barbies now they got the new Maya Angelou Barbie Jeez, yeah that's gonna fly off the shelves <laughs> but uh <laughs> anyway Mattel figured it out in the 90s this is a dying market so we're gonna experiment with targeting adults 
that's where it started. Mattel's always been kind of innovative with that sort of thing. But the Maddie Club proved it. Maddie Club was what? Selling to adults, but they were selling it through the mail. People really wanted to see it in stores, so, okay, we'll put a few in stores and feel it out. But they're not going to flood the stores with figures. None of these companies are going to do that, because if they turn into a crap ton of shelf warmers, then the companies, uh, Walmart, Target, whoever, they're going to stop ordering them. Because they're like, we don't want this stuff sitting on the shelves forever, and then we get to sell them at clearance. So they trickle them out. Also, that plays into the um, artificial demand model, which you've heard me go on a lot about with Funko, because Funko does a lot of that. And the reason they do a lot of it is because they overproduce everything. But that doesn't mean that Hasbro and Mattel and all these other companies don't do the same thing. Artificial demand plus humoring adult collectors until it's no longer economically viable, and then you're not going to see them in stores anymore. They'll go back to uh, selling them through the mail. I'm cool with buying it through the mail because you can get it. it. Honestly, it's easier. Yeah, I mean, you got to deal with shipping, but yeah. if depending on the store, some stores do a good job with, with shipping. Yeah. I've bought from Entertainment Earth. I've bought from uh, Big Bad Toy Store. Stores that cater to adult yeah. collectors. Yeah, they do a good way. job. Because if you're talking Walmart or Target or Amazon, you're going to be crying. Yeah, unless you're a prime member. <laughs> Whatever, you keep making that dig on me, but it's not true. <laughs> you saw how my soap came. Nice that, and bubble that wrapped. That is sickening to me. Man, that, that, that soap was so bubble wrapped. <laughs> they, they meticulously packed soap that she ordered in bulk. This is a specific soap she wanted. She bought a bunch. Very meticulously wrapped and pillows and bubble wrap and, and then they were boxed action individually figures, action figures <laughs> they fold them and they cram them in a box or they stick them in an envelope because it, and it's like oh that's insulting but i mean i'm gonna say it and i don't know how if this is <laughs> true at all but when i first started buying action figures on amazon yeah i sent everyone back because they were destroyed. And I left so many bad comments <laughs> on Amazon. And this is the truth. And they Amazon stopped. Will, Amazon will delete your comments. They, the they stopped yeah. allowing me to make comments. And then they also stopped <laughs> sending my packages damaged. Because I was sending them back. As soon as wow. the mail came, I would open the box and I would get right in my car and go back to the, back UPS, to the UPS store. I remember. And, um, and drop it off. And then I would leave a nasty comment. And they would say, well, why are you re returning this? And I would take the pictures and send them the pictures and complain. It. and just Yeah, you destroyed it. And I want it back, but not in this condition. Yep. And uh, they they um they blocked me for months from leaving comments. I couldn't leave comments at you know, all. You know what the sad part about it, that is, though? What? You know that they took that same figure mm -hmm. and sent it to the next guy. Yeah, they sent it to somebody else. Somebody That's wanted how I ended it. up with that Mezco Frank Castle. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, with the Castle, Frankenstein. Castlestein. With the Frankenstein. What Frankenstein head or body no, or something? No, it was Frank Castle. It was the. It was the. It was advertised as mint in the box, mm -hmm. unopened. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amazon Prime, um, and it was the Punisher box, and you open it up, and you had Frank Castle's head on on Frankenstein's body. The black and white version of Frankenstein. <laughs> and all of the, the parts, all of his guns, there were guns in there, but they weren't his. They were they were like these knockoff little rubber guns and stuff, little cheap crap. <laughs> and I sent it back, and I know that they just moved that on to someone else. Yeah, and then put mint, minty fresh in the box. Yeah, mint in the box, unopened. <laughs> oh, boy. Bastards. But that's yeah, how they guys, do you. I'm sorry. I mean, I know that that's going to hurt some feelings, but... These companies are just humoring us as adult collectors. They're trying to meet a nostalgia demand within the adult community. And part of that is going into the store, into the toy aisle. I mean, when's the last time you saw a kid in the toy aisle? You know, every time During I'm in Christmas, a toy aisle. Yeah, a couple. With their parents. But, yeah, and the parents are probably the ones doing the shopping for themselves. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm in the toy aisle, it's, all, it's, it's 
grown men and women looking it, on the, on the pegs. And then they talk to you about figures, and then you stand there for like forty five minutes talking about your collection. <laughs> That's happened to us. That's happened to us. And people are like, uh, "Oh, you're looking for that? Or you're into that?" And they would get into a, get hooked into a little conversation there. Mm -hmm. But it's um, the same people that are buying action figures now are the same people that were buying them 30 years ago you know it, it, the kids a lot of the kids aren't interested in it, in it anymore the um the industry has changed the golden era of action figures was from about 1964 with the introduction of the america's movable fighting man gi joe to uh about 96 97 ish so 90s kids might still be interested in going out and finding action figures and toys, but these young kids, most of them don't really care. <laughs> you know, they it's the video age. They want interactive gaming. They don't want to use their imaginations. You know, when you're playing a, a video game, most video games nowadays aren't challenge games like what we grew up with. They're story games. So you're playing a story, but it's someone else's story it's their imagination that you're living in mm -hmm. so these kids aren't using their imaginations at all they might be uh, honing their hand-eye coordination pressing little buttons but that's about it and I, you know I'm not taking away from the gaming gaming's fun but you're really not using your imagination the way you think and this is a lost art I mean this is this is for us now and one day it'll fade away just like um, other eras of toy collecting, tin uh, wind-up toys and cap guns and play sets like that, uh, like that battle wagon sitting there, that deluxe reading battle wagon. That's a play set. You see the little men on it and stuff. That's what they had before action figures. For those of you who aren't old enough, this is from like what I think 1961 deluxe reading, sold in uh, supermarkets as a Christmas special. But, you know, this has faded away. People don't, uh, kids don't want play sets like this anymore. I don't even know if they make them. I mean, you know, you can go to the dollar store and find little army men, but that's not the same thing. The things change. But the adult collector's market still has their hooks in, in people our age. You're really into that battle wagon now. Hmm? I'm just showing the, uh, it's cool. the people. And In case they didn't see it's it. a fully functional battle wagon. Oh, the light come on. The light comes on and the engine runs. And you probably had to know um, Morse code. If you did, you can signal to your little friends, your little they, Boy they Scout knew it. friends. Hell, I knew Morse code when I was a kid. I can't remember it now. But I well, knew. in Boy Scouts, you had to learn. Yeah, that was one of those things people just knew back then. Mm. You look at the... Uh, Cobra, Sepantor, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's the most evil foe of G.I. Joe. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell, guys. And like I said, I don't mean to step on anybody's neck, but they're just trying to humor the adult collector until it, it's just not worth it for them anymore. And then they'll go back. You know, I bet you you'll be hard-pressed to find Ghostbusters anytime soon. They, the Ghostbusters, they're hitting the stores hard. They've been piling up. They're on clearance now. Mm -hmm. Um it, it didn't work out with the Ghostbusters in in the uh, Walmart because now the figures are there. Yeah. Lots of them that are turning up in Walmarts. Uh, I'm talking about the reissues of the old Kenners mm -hmm. and then the boxed ones that came out. What was that? The Plasma series from Hasbro? Yeah, Plasma. They didn't, they didn't sell. It didn't work out. Because they sold it online first. They sold first. it online first and everybody bought them and then that took it away from the idea of going to the store and finding it. Now they're on clearance. Yeah. And if that keeps happening, you're not going to see Ghostbusters in in the stores again. You know, it's something to think about. Can't find that Ecto-1. Well, that's only just starting to roll out. It might turn up. Yeah. Is that a Target exclusive? <sighs> yeah. That's so. a playset. One of my favorite uh, toy lines right there, the uh, Remco McDonald's. Yeah, he was heartbroken, and he went on for like three hours about that um, Funko Pop at Target. I did not. And couldn't get it. I did not. Okay. You're putting words in my mouth. Yeah, okay. Y'all can believe who you want to believe. <laughs> that dude went on for about three hours. You're awful. Street date. That's all he would Street say. Date. 
street date. Do not speak those words in this house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a street date. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got anything else you want to rant about? No, I mean, I, I think that's about it. I mean, it's just, it's just the truth from an industry perspective. Mm -hmm. Like those uh, Chem Toy Fat Albert figures. Mm. And like I said, not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but it's just the truth. The companies are just trying to humor us and until it's just not worth it for them to do it anymore. And then they'll go back to online sales, which would probably be better. I mean, we want the nostalgia of going in and finding it on the shelf and being like, wee, like a little kid. <laughs> We're not little kids anymore. And it doesn't feel the same. It really doesn't. It's like you can't quite go back. We try, but you can't quite go back. Not all the way. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. it's nice when we find it. Like you found the, uh, you found these today. This is what she found on the on the shelf, and we were shocked. And mm. she was like, "Wow, it's actually here!" And you know, and it is fun. Mm -hmm. It is fun to to actually find it and not have to go online or you know go to a convention or whatever mm -hmm. but it's not the same as when you were a little kid i don't think so although we try <laughs> we try <laughs>